All right, everyone. So welcome for coming out tonight to our guest speaker series. Uh, as usual, uh, we first want to acknowledge that we are located on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, uh, looking towards the Squamish, the tsleil and the Musqueam nations. Super grateful for our presence, both physically and vir virtually. Uh, and it's virtually is going to be especially relevant tonight uh, as I start to learn more about the metaverse uh, and other uh, universes around us. But uh, as part of that, uh, we are um, welcoming a uh, guest from Taffy or Daz 3D. I'm going to learn what the definition between the two really is tonight uh, with uh, Ty and Kirsten. Uh, I've shared bios um, with the folks on the calls, but what I think I want to do is for the purpose of introductions, I'm going to pass it over to um, Kirsten, actually, if you could introduce yourself first, a little bit about your role within and uh, maybe a little bit about your background too, and then we'll go over to Ty. Sure. Uh, my name is Kirsten Sharp. I've been working in and out of the visual effects animation industry since 2004. Um, I have a degree in business administration with a joint major in psychology from Simon Fraser University. And then I went back to school and did the television diploma at BCIT. I worked for a while as an editor at um, Global in their marketing department and as well as their promotional department. And then I worked at CTV as a news editor with Tape to Tape, so that shows my age. Um, and then I started with Mainframe in 2004 with a small uh, coordinating gig, which was my first foray into animation and um, definitely dove in the pool and treaded water for a while, learning a very, very different medium. But I loved the energy and the fast pace nature of working together and coming together as a collaborative team. And since then, uh, I've mostly worked in animation and visual effects. I've worked in 2D, 3D, um, mostly AAA game trailers, as well as FMVs, as we referenced for prototype. I took a short leave. I went to a nonprofit and uh, hosted a YouTube show for them as well, did their marketing and sponsorship initiatives, and then went into radio for two years where I started producing two different radio programs and then ended up co-hosting a morning talk show at Roundhouse Radio. Left there, went to back into visual effects, uh, well, in games actually, I was in a special department at Electronic Arts where we made in-house trailers with the game engine and released, um, we worked with Star Wars, we worked with FIFA, we worked with NHL, basically all of their content and created these trailers in a, a cyclical approach and then ended up with um, Taffy and Daz. And at, um, currently at Daz, I'm head of content production for the Daz side of things. So we'll get more into that as we talk about that's the company. Awesome, appreciate that's a, That's quite the journey in gaming, <laughs> animation, into the, the content marketplace here. This, it's been quite the journey. Um, Ty, do you want to give us a little uh, background around, around yourself and what you're currently doing? Sure, yeah. I don't know how I can follow that up. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is I'm going to show you that uh, I Larry was actually my first. Oh, yes. So I got a tattoo of him on my hand. Yep. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> Larry, um, the up, uh, it continues. <laughs> uh, but no, the, in all serious, I went to visit VFS and my first 3D job was actually working for Larry uh, at VFS. So that's that's how we know each other. Um, after that, I went into film for a little while, um, went into video games, ended up in video games for a long time, did the avatars for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One, ran my own business, and that's how I ended up with Taffy Daz, is we started doing a lot of avatar work. And so I started as a consultant, and then they offered me the job. Uh, and I started that distinctive publishers. I kind of remember from publishers. Yes, sir. Yeah. Xbox uh, marketplace avatars or something. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And then we helped uh, design the Xbox one avatars, which was really interesting. Um, yeah. And then now I'm here. That's cool. Well, this is, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to, to have you both, especially on, on the one window, actually, this is very convenient. Yeah. I mean, it's, we, had, we, had, we ended up having a strategic session for the last two days and one of our colleagues came up from Salt Lake because that's we where actually have up. a guy hiding uh, okay one. a third oh hey hiding guy that's awesome I appreciate the hiding guy that's just great he flew, right. he flew well, up from did, Salt Lake uh so helped us with our strategic fantastic plan. and uh how's the search in Vancouver about finding roots here there's a you're so still... an offer on a space so nice. hey congrats Hopefully it works out. Um, 
I mean, we've done this before and they didn't work out. So hope, you know, fingers crossed that this one works out, but yeah, uh, no, it's good. We, uh, and we have a handful of interviews next week uh, for like just expanding the team. And so, so far so good. I think uh, we're quite liking Vancouver. We're trying to talk Peter into relocating. Um, the yeah. weather hasn't helped these. No, days. Like, today's not the day. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday was nice and uh, Saturday was fantastic. So yes, this yeah. Saturday. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's leaving Friday, which is also supposed to be beautiful. But Right. Well, um, appreciate all of your time, including the third, the uh, off cam, but that's great. So, um, but yeah, the exciting part of this is that, uh, I mean, you obviously both have roots in Vancouver, but uh, you know, the, the reach of the studio is much further as far as I mean, Salt Lake City is sitting right next to you, which is great. Um, but now what, what's the plan for Vancouver? So I, I know our, our conversation started with looking at some of the hires or looking at studio space and growth plans. So what's, um, what's Taffy's plans for Vancouver and where might the MDM fit in there? Let's. Uh... Yeah. And so, I mean, I can, I can speak to that. So part of when I started and I joined the team, so obviously my network is in Vancouver. Um, and then we found Kirsten who's also network is here. So like our creative director um, was here earlier today. He's, he's from Vancouver, uh, worked at EA for a number of years, worked with me on the Xbox avatars. And so, you know, for us, it was, it was really looking for more diversity. So like one of the things that's really been key to me since I started and, and Kirsten's really helped like lead this is really creating an expression and reach for more people to like have a voice and like, like we create digital art, we create digital avatars, which, you know, move into that virtual identity con conversation. And it became really important to us to have more creators in both our community, but also in our company that had a different voice, a different attitude. Um, and, you know, without, without saying it wrong, like that became difficult in Salt Lake. Um, and so we started looking at potential other opportunities and we looked at Austin and Seattle uh, in the San Francisco area, but with the roots in Vancouver. And then when we found Kirsten, when we found Gary, we just started kind of finding these pieces. Um, and we found, we had a, a team of 10 people in Vancouver and the support of Vancouver, the grassroots and the schools. And like, like there's this great pipeline of like, and not just Vancouver talent, like global talent, right? People coming out from Brazil and over from Asia. And it creates this like really, really broad spectrum of people of backgrounds, um, and that's that's part of why we started really focusing in on Vancouver, and and then we decided to have a permanent space. So you know we have we have a legal entity, we're getting a, a space, and we're looking to expand. And right now we have about ten. Uh, by end of next year, we would like to have twenty to twenty five. So like it's it's rapid growth in the Vancouver space, um, both from an art perspective. You know we basically have three pillars that we worry about. Like where we have art creation, we have our marketplace management. And then we have our technologies. And so really like with what you all do, there's like basically every piece of that spectrum is valuable uh, to some part of our business. Um, and the business is strong and it's healthy. And, and we just felt like now is a really good time to, to expand. Like it, years ago, it was a multinational company, both in the US and Israel. The Israel office uh, ended up shutting down or for a number of different reasons. And it just seemed like the right time to start expanding again and Vancouver was just I mean the, the tech here is just is is un, unparalleled right like like having not just tech but gaming and visual effects and all these these talented people in one space so that's that's why we targeted Vancouver nice and, and you represent that having worked in both yourselves it's uh and and I also like again pointing to the history the connections that you had and establishing that but also you know you're, you're going to grow as a company and the talent we have is going to be quite interested in what you're doing. And I think, um, I mean, I've shared some links about, we'll say Taffy, but can you maybe define within those three verticals? So what the, the dad's 3D is to what the Taffy is um, for us? Just, yeah. Yeah, we have a little presentation we can share if that's cool. Oh, perfect. Yeah, if you want to screen share, if um, it's enabled. You should be able to. It's pretty short, yeah. so. Well, I'm but working with your time. I'm talking fast so we can get you back to putting out yeah, fires. No, and... I think it'll give a good base and then we can put it, go in more detail into it. Perfect. Yeah. So we're Taffy and Daz. We're essentially two different companies with two different sides. And hopefully that'll become more clear at the end of this presentation. 
Yeah. Can everyone see it? Sorry. We can, but we're seeing your presenter view. So I don't know if you want to go full oh. screen on. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So yeah, so the basis, um, DAS started as it was called Digital Art Zone back in the day. And people uh, that have gray hairs like me might remember Poser uh, and Bryce and other applications. And so DAS actually started as a content community in those other platforms. And then it grew and they, we built our own software, actually ended up buying Bryce and kind of combining. And so over 20 years of this stuff, they figured out all these tools and all these ways to make characters more dynamic. And Taffy is this concept of taking that technology into a runtime environment. So we, you know, like my predecessors before I even joined saw that the metaverse, and at the time it was VR, was starting to become like they saw that as the future and and whether vr was or wasn't you know at the time it seemed good and what happened was they were trying to bring the same content to a whole bunch of different hmds and you would have things like pico would have one there was no chrono standard right so pico would have one standard for avatars you know vive would have another oculus would have another oculus had two different SKUs at the time and so to solve these problems they had to create a series of tools that it ran auto decimation, maintain texture fidelity, all because they, you know, we'll get into DAS kind of later, but DAS is really the ethos of it. You could take a DAS body like mine, make it fat, make it skinny, make it buff without having to recreate the shirt. Now, bringing that into a runtime environment is a big deal because on like the Xbox One and stuff, if you wanted to use the 16 different body types, so you had to change the avatar content 16 different times. And the DAS technology allows you not to do that. And the reason that's important is DAS was built on this UGC community before UGC was a thing, because it was, it was just this, this forum. And you can't ask UGC creators to create something that's that complex. So it's a simplified solution. And bringing that solution digitally, when they started trying to make it work for the different hardwares, ended up creating, and it's patented, these avatars that could travel across hardwares and across software. So it didn't matter the engine, didn't matter the hardware. That became really powerful. So then we use that as a solution. So did a project for Ready Player One, did something for VR Chat, like these, these little projects with this, this tool set. And then it became obvious to us that this is super valuable, not just for, for professional gamers, but indie game developers, students and whoever who want to be able to access this, this option and so we, we've created an SDK to try and productize that. And, and at its core, it includes monetization because it was all built on the DAS software. So you can product monetize and similar to how Roblox works, where there's a top level and all, there's different, all these different experiences can feed back into that avatar store. And let's say like Larry has a game I don't even know exists. My users might be buying content from his game and vice versa. And then you start cross pollinating, right? Because that's how their system works, but it's closed. Ours works the same way, but it's open. And we've taken that, you know, one of our partners is AR Emoji with Samsung, and we've taken a bunch of our branded partners and brought content. So every piece of premium content you see on the AR Emoji platform was created by our team. And so we've created thousands of pieces of content and brought that to their system. We help with the marketplace management. We help with, you know, monetizing and, and pushing that content forward. And this is using that same kind of, kind of ethos. So you can see here, we have partnerships with Warner Brothers, Champion, you know, Coca-Cola. And so, that, so this is really what Taffy is trying to do. Taffy is trying to bring that avatar, but not just avatars and avatars content. It's a tool set so that creators who are making small games or virtual worlds who wouldn't invest in a character creator because it's a really hard thing to do can now install a character creator and also earn revenue on, on microtransactions which they might not otherwise do, right? And so that's kind of the concept of it because we think like people are gonna to wanna to be able to have that persistent avatar, but even for systems that don't, they can now take avatars and, and monetize their product easier without having to worry about, you know, some of the, the, the challenges in creating that, that back end. And so this is, this is the SDK as deployed in VR chat. So this same avatar you can use on VR chat or on a, Android device at 60 frames per second. That's awesome. I actually could just give you a breather here too. I, I just met with um, Jesse Jowdry last week, actually. He's a 
an old friend of the program, the, one of the co-founders of VR Chat. So he was just uh, chat. Uh, we were con connecting about this connection. So it's kind of cool to see that the SDK does uh, integrate. Um, and he was showing us, uh, Larry and I, a, a trailer that was done within the VR Chat environment with various avatars. And I was wondering if it was connected. But anyway, again, on those oh, yeah, VR Chat right now on the screen. Oh, it's okay. There you go. Super cool. Yeah. So yeah, Larry, uh, yeah, that was um, that, that's that's impressive. And, and so with that, so you were talking about the content and the the branded content. But so is this connected to your content creator platform? Like, are there external users that can also monetize content? Are you is that in yeah. your deck? Yeah, and so that's that's the so the, so we don't have good examples of that in the SDK because a lot of our beta clients haven't released yet. Uh, but that's the concept. And so not just devs who are making games can use this, but if you're a creator, think like the Unity Asset Store or whatever, and you want to create content into this, this ecosystem, you can, and you can monetize it, uh, just like we do on Daz and, and personal. I'll let her talk about that because that's like her world. Um, but yeah, and so, so it's all based on that concept. It's cr you know, creator first and, and creating that, that entry point. Uh, but yeah, the, one of the first partners we worked with was, was VR chat. So creators can create content that they can then monetize uh, into VR chat. Very cool. So to put it in the layman terms for, for the students on the call and that too. So if the, we have some 3D modelers or others that are interested in creating assets, can they get yeah, into this? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. And alternatively into DAS. And alternatively into DAS. We have a creator community of just under a thousand right now. And we're always looking for new ones. Nice. Martha Love, you said that, right? Yes. Nah. Uh, and then, yeah, and then just to kind of because it's in the presentation in this order, you know, as we were looking at the metaverse and this, so all of our avatars and things are metadata backed. That's how we manage the content. That's how we stream the content. That's how you can share content between worlds. And that led, uh, you know, with the NFTs really hitting the mainstream in the last year, we were kind of looking at it long term as like, hey, the blockchain's interesting. We had vetted it a couple of years ago, you know. 2018 i want to say and then it wasn't really like a solution for us and then 2019 looked at it again and then last fall as it started to take off we started getting a lot of questions from our branded partners uh different virtual worlds like decentraland if we could participate um and i want to say we shipped our first thing in march with champion and since then we've been creating a lot of this content um and Kirsten and I were, were quite hands-on on this project and I really, really was, really enjoyed it. We, we actually thought one of the hardest piece, pieces would be the, ended up being the easiest piece, which was funny. Um, we had no idea how we were gonna do it and it ended up working out. Anyway, um, this ended up shipping and now this is obviously something Coke is very proud of. It was very successful and we've been doing more and more of this with like OpenSea and Decentraland because now that digital ownership has been established, you know, you talk about the metaverse and stuff like that. You can't really separate the two. Like blockchain is, is now really that, that the piping, I guess, of the metaverse. And it's been really interesting to see it grow because, you know, you talk about digital creators who are on the call potentially. What's really neat for me about NFTs is it's created an entry point. It's created a discoverability point for artists that wouldn't otherwise have it. Um, and it's just been really impressive to see, you know, that transition. If you think of groups like, like Artifact, a bunch of like three kids who were doing Dota skins, um, basically created the supreme of brand of the metaverse and have been super successful. And they're, they're great dudes. Like they're, they're really cool guys. So you're just happy to see them succeed. So that, well, that's cool. Cause we actually, I did have a talk um, just last term on NFTs and just getting into the, you know, the blockchain um, kind of space as well. There's interest um, now, does your platform, so that as a content creator, do you have the, the ability for converting assets into NFT secured assets? Like how, how's, how's that functionality work? Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of a last mile issue still, right? So like there is, it depends on where you want to output it, whether that's say Theta, Polygon or Ethereum. But mm -hmm. we have partnerships with Decentraland, with OpenSea, with Rarible, with Theta. Um, and so for our creators right now, and we have shipped a bunch of DAZ content. If you go on OpenSea, you can look up DAZ 3D and you can see content created uh, that's for sale. And, and we, you know, like lower price point, obviously, because the whole point is access. Um, and that, yeah, and we're actively asking our creators if they want to participate. 
it is a little bit of like, it's not like you can go into as and just export it. I mean, if you know a little bit, you can do it yourself. Uh, but we're, we're managing that last mile with OpenSea right now. Cool. I'm still wrapping my head around the NFT thing, but the other thing with um, That's a whole longer conversation. I'm I was going to say, I, we don't, we're not going to fit that into your tight time frame here, but um, one other thing I did want to ask, cause it's already come up, but I, I wanted to get your thoughts on the definition of the metaverse. Cause that's, it's, it continues to, to permeate popular cu culture. I know you've touched on ready player one as something you've even worked on. And that's something that, you know, we somewhat associate with the idea of the metaverse, but um, what is it in sort of the, in its current state or future state in, in your views? So I feel like I'm dominating, but no, like, but, yes. but, uh, but like, so metaverse is, so I, I'm really excited about this and I've been asked to talk a couple different times on it. So like, I hope we'll try not to go too far off the rails here, but I think what's interesting about the metaverse is too many people are thinking of it as, as, as a traditional 3D virtual space, right? The ready player one space. But when you think of the metaverse, to me, it's everywhere you exist digitally. So as it stands today, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, what we're doing right now mm -hmm. is all part of a metaverse, right? Like it's all interoperable digital space. I move between these digital experiences like they're the same thing. Generally, if I was at home, I would be joining this call as an avatar. Like it is, it's just part of, it's a fun parlor trick and I like to do it. But you create these, this, so all that's part of the metaverse, but beyond that, like when you're looking at AR on your phone, that's part of the metaverse. So like, sure, there'll be these virtual worlds like Decentraland, there'll be these virtual experiences, but like, again, our artifact, you know, they're trying to come up with new and innovative ways to expand the metaverse from both digital to physical items. You think of things like the future, right? Imagine the future with Snapchat filters, you're already kind of seeing it, but they're investing so heavily in glass. You got Snap, you got Facebook, you got all these other groups, Microsoft really investing in glass. And if AR glass and AR contacts takes off, your metaverse will literally be down the street. You'll be able to look at each other and see, I might be wearing a black shirt on the street, but with your goggles on, you're going to see like flames or something you couldn't even imagine or animated graphics. Or you think of the NFT space, where they have things like board ape, yeah, exactly. You got it. Uh, things like board ape yacht club, mm -hmm. where you know it's a club, it's a closed club. Well, let's say I'm part of that club, and someone else is part of that club, and we both have AR glass on, and we look at each other, and we both see our board apes. But then someone else is in the same space and looks at us with their AR glass on, and they don't see the apes because they're not in that club. So you can start creating these like parcel virtual worlds in reality right and all that is stuff people are already considering planning it's coming like like so it's like i don't think people know what it's going to be yet because it's something that's just going to keep innovating and i think actually what you've seen in ready player me is like the baseline like i i think you're actually going to see meta experiences in reality Cool. I don't right. answer the question of that made it more. It, it kind of did. No, it's 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 going to be an ongoing conversation. But as, as NFTs and metaverse continues to 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 trend, it this is all helping. But uh, I guess back to the deck and uh, what what's next for us? Uh, so this is Daz 3D. So as I was mentioning, it started way back before my time, and when I was hired at Daz. I didn't even know what my role was going to be, which is this another interesting to start. Job. No, it wasn't supposed to be my job. So this, this is something they're like, here, you do this, which is great. You know, hey, teaching moment. That's awesome. Because we, we, Larry and I were even chatting about this earlier, but you don't want to define yourself as just one thing. You got to be sort of, you know, adapt yeah. to what's needed, right? Yes. Okay, can I embarrass you for a second? Yeah, of course. Okay, so when I met Kirsten, I told her I'm like not good at interviews. Like it's, it's one of my own weaknesses. I know it. I'm like, so I always make these super quick. We ended up talking for like two and a half hours. And I left the interview saying like, I have no idea what you're going to do, but I really want to hire you. And I just don't have a spot for you. And we must've talked like over the next four weeks. Yes. Well, and then COVID had just started. Yeah. Which also wasn't helpful because. And then it was like, you know, cause we were going to rent a, a bunch of stuff happened. So I was like, okay, we're going to hire you. And we were trying to define what that role was. And then we had something change in our organization. It's like, oh, you're going to do this now. Um, and, and we were right. Like she was fantastic, but it was just, it was like, that would be like, if I'm going to give any unsolicited advice to people on the call, it's like, 
it's team first, it's people first, right? You might think you have one skill set, but it might be applied completely different. And like, as long as you're willing to adapt, you'll be way more secure. Like, anyway, that was- that No, was that's really- an awesome tip. And it is true. And it definitely speaks to the, that team person or, you know, knowing that somebody you want to work with more than just say the paper qualifications for a role that's maybe not fully even defined as to what you need, right? So, but knowing yeah. you want to work with that person is cool. And <laughs> And full disclosure, our last two days here was strategic planning. Yeah. And most of it ended up being about culture. Yeah. And we wanted on our team to expand and what came first and what attributes of that person we held in higher regard than, than simply competence to do sure. their job. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so DAS3D, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it quickly. Basically, we have a marketplace. As Ty was talking, we have almost a thousand creators that are part of a community that really work from home. When I, when I started, um, I have worked in Vancouver in this industry for a long time, and they were professionals that, that came to a place of work and did a job for someone else. Basically, our creators, not that they're not professionals, I don't want to put that, but they're people that tend to work from home. They create their own stuff, and we have given them this opportunity to be part of a community and sell their product, their creations, whatever they make online. And some of them are self-taught. Yeah. And a lot of them are self-taught. And a lot of them, what I'm missing with COVID is I haven't been able to have those interactions in person with them, which we usually tend to do every year. And for me, relationship building with whoever you work with, whether they be next to you, beside you, or, you know, virtually, that relationship really helps to understand who that person is and set that person up for success. So that's what I've felt really has been missing with COVID and has also bled into DAS 3D. So we have two sort of streams of revenue within the marketplace. We create our own internal content. So we have our own staff that creates content that we sell. Um, We have our PA created content. And then we also have content that we buy from our PAs and call Daz Originals. So if you go onto our store, you'll see characters, environments, um, animals, poses, animations, um, tutorials. What am I missing? Plugins. (laughs) Plugins, yeah. Um, HDRIs, lights. And we have a review team that we get about 40 products a day and we go through those products. We provide feedback. We then decide if we perhaps want to make an offer on it. If it wants to go through as brokered content, it goes through a rigorous QA process, which is also under our product team. And then we release it onto the store for sale. And we have customers who range from hobbyists, So when I started, uh, one member of our team, she was hilarious. She's like, think of it like paper dolls. And people are buying those paper dolls, buying clothing for them, dressing them, and then creating scenes of them. Yes, Uh, which I thought was hilarious. But we also have, um, as I was explaining when I was started, if you go into chapters and you look at books that are on the wall, and for those who are international, it's a bookstore, um, and people will choose to buy our assets and render scenes to create the book cover instead of paying models who could be that much more expensive or the digitals hmm. or the digits. Yes. So what are you digitals as in should do? Yeah. Yeah. Like there's a couple of people that use it to make virtual supermodels. And, and the one we take this for granted, but it just occurred to me as you were describing it is all our character content is interoperable. So you take like, a a base female like the character on screen you can change the hair you can change the outfit you can make her a centaur you can make her half an alien a full alien our blend shapes will blend shapes bone position bone rotation and uh, textures so you can blend textures at 10 percent or 100 percent, which becomes super powerful um, for your flexibility and then all the base characters have full fax rigs and and all this stuff so people can use it for like face tracking and so lots and that's of based, cases. yeah and that's based on our software which is free for anyone so they can download daz and start playing with it and using it um, to produce their own content and then sell within our store we're expanding our marketplace so we're offering 
um, different types of content because we want to ensure that we're engaging customers that we may not be reaching just with uh, studio and providing them with different options with everything that's out there from Maya to Blender to Unreal yeah. and awesome. ensuring that we're hitting all of those different marketplaces. Nice. Um, I am seeing a question in the chat on the, can they export to FBX or go to Maya or Unreal? So we have a, a number of bridges that we've just released in the last year. So that's exciting for us. And they're open source. Yes, and they are open source. Um, we also have uh, the Nick Hyatt who did the Mandalorian. He did all his previews using DAZ. Mm -hmm. So we have use cases that go from the hobbyist to the professional. We have, we can't talk about what it is, but we have a, a studio right now that's using all DAZ content to create their next um, animated adult show. Yep. Um, so it's it's really interesting to see its use cases. And for me coming from just sort of either a client's perspective, working at EA or working for you know a, a game company, that one person, now we have this broader school of thought and and how do we ensure that we're giving everybody who's our customer what they need and what they want. Um, so we, we've gone over sort of the, the published artists that we have. And, and this is just an example. Yeah, just one example. We have two internal um, sculptors and two internal texture artists who create what we call tier one character releases. We, we release two to four of these a month. Um, they are pretty intense. They take about three months from start to finish. This is one of them. Our, our base models are based on Victoria and Michael. And this is Victoria. Every generation of Daz, we release a new Victoria. So this is 8.1, kind of think of it like the iPhone 10. X. We weren't quite ready for a new version. No, so, so we kind of have um, But it did have a lot of new features. And we also really believe in inclusion in the store. So Victoria that we released, as you can see here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but she does have a hearing aid and Victoria was a character who was deaf. Um, and Michael, I don't have a picture of him, but he was a character who also was a wheelchair basketball player. That so was awesome. And again, I want to applaud you on your own wheelchair tennis uh, representation there. I read that in the bio. So that's super Thanks. cool to see. Uh, not only yeah. in the virtual world or metaverse, but I mean, what you're doing in, in our, our real world here too, so. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I, I've had the opportunity um, consulting on two different DreamWorks shows that are featuring characters who have disabilities. And I'm, I'm really proud to work for a company like Daz Taffy that promotes inclusion in a way that it isn't checking a box. It's actually like this Victoria just looks like yeah. a college student but she happens to be deaf and the same was with michael like he and then you found out a cool story about the one of our pas and they helped yeah us with the hearing aids too so um talk about relationship buildings with our pas and one of our pas contacted us and said that she was deaf we release the characters about four months previous so our pas get to see what our calendar, who the theme is going to be. Victoria and Michael happen to be university students, but we do sci-fi releases. We have a Day of the Dead theme coming up. So they see that so they can help us with content and add to it. And they said, I am actually deaf myself and I, I use hearing aids and I'd really like to help create authentic hearing aids. And we also have promo artists. And one of them sent me a message and said, I actually have a spinal cord injury and I use a wheelchair and I think it's really cool that you're doing this. And I'd never felt comfortable telling anyone else that it's part of the reason I work from home, which was really neat to be able to create more community with these releases. We released someone last month that had down syndrome and she was a private eye and we did her in a noir setting. That's awesome. I've just like this inclusionary design. Um, we Larry yeah. hosted a design jam on the weekend and one of the teams had a a wheelchair in one of the representations up on this power generating mobile thing. And I was just like, I thought that was so cool. And just seeing, you know, that it's actually not, not an afterthought either. This is just like there's designs and it's being incorporated and it's, it's eventually becoming normal visually in that too. It's like, it's just like, Hey, this it's, we were fixated for so many years on just having only, you know, pick 
character A or character B, right? And it's always the, you know, the ideal norm, I'm air quoting that, uh, but, uh, you know, this yeah. is awesome. The word is, normal, what is normal, right? I know, right? That's why I, I'm going to air quote that from now on. There's no, there's no normal anymore. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But awesome. we're really proud of what the what the software does and um, the the community that we've created within yeah. our published artists. The PA stands for published artists. So going back to your question of how do you get involved if there's artists that are on this call or you know of people who are artists and have content to sell, we can um, sign you up with the marketplace. There is a review process that you go through to be accepted. Um, we do set standards for the store and then you can start selling with Daz and 50% of that profit goes into your pocket. Nice. So on the other side of that, so the non-artist content creators, what about the content consumers? So if there's students or Larry wants to make an animated film and he wants to put some characters into his film, how do, how do we approach your platforms that way on getting access to the assets? Yeah, so the, the, there's two ways to look at that one. So specifically, if you're an individual, uh, our EULA allows um, commercial use. So if it's a 2D output, say a film or a poster or whatever, um, you just need a standard license. If it's an interactive experience, there's an extended license. Um, and if you're a studio, say five or more people, and you're creating professional outputs, we create what's called an enterprise license. And then you have access to our entire library. Uh, and you don't have to worry about you know buying content as a one-off if you were going to use it as a larger project. But no, but our, like you could buy Victoria as she is right here and go use her in an, as to start an animated short and it happens all the time or film or whatever. And you would be well within your rights. So you can create new content and put on top of her or whatever. Um, it, it, it's literally designed to be an entry point into 3D for, for that, like to allow for people to, to commercialize. And like we mentioned Shudu earlier, it's a company called The Digitals. Uh, Cameron James Wilson, super talented, was a fashion photographer uh, and created with Daz what he called his like ideal muse. And with his fashion, like with his photography, he was able to use the tools to create these realistic, beautiful photos. And he monetizes that. Shooter's done campaigns for Vogue Italia, for Samsung, for Lexus. Um, and, and that's totally his right. So yeah, Daz is, is, is meant to be a platform that people can leverage. So think of it like custom built stock footage. Cool. All right. So I'm also, they're asking about, can I modify assets? And I think that you'd answered in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So for example, Victoria is wearing um, one of these lingerie outfits, her tattoos, you can place as many or as little as you want or none um, different hairstyles. You can see uh, she, each character comes with, three to five makeups. So these are the different makeup looks that she has. You could buy a piercing set. You can um, modify the geo if you're a modeler. Like Yeah, you could mix Victoria with Shudu and yep. have like a, Shudu is a black character, have like a two-tone, like, a little less black. I don't know how to say that properly, but. Um, Biracial. Yes, you could make Victoria thicker. You could make her skinnier, um, for example. Well, for Michael, because he uses a wheelchair, we had two different versions of him. We had skinnier legs for to show the atrophy, but you could also expand those legs and have them be muscular. Yeah. And like with the outputs, you know, we have bridges that take it to Maya and in our Maya bridge, there's, it redoes the rig as a human IK rig. So it absorbs mocap. And then, you know, we have a script where you can add an animation control rig um, we have outputs to Cinema 4D, Max, Unity, Unreal. And so, you know, it's up to like take the FBX, you can export an FBX, you can export an OBJ, even Collada, it's that old. Uh, and you can modify the geo and yeah, use it for however you like. And throughout the store, as we're talking, I mean, there's HDRIs or lighting or yep. poses, like people sell a set of 15 poses. So it takes Victoria and puts her hands on her hips. So if you don't physically know how to do that yourself, you can create that render and buy a pose and it would pose any of our characters into that. Very cool. No, and so I will, is there an academic license on the platform too? I'm just trying to think because getting access early if people want to play around. So with there, used, there, there is, I don't know. 
I don't know it that well off the top of my head. I haven't looked at it a lot. We'll chat more on it. I'm not going to uh, message me. Yes, but like that's that's definitely. It, it's on our radar and we want to get back into it. So yeah. we're definitely willing to open up those conversations. Well, and that, and that's, Cause I'm thinking like, this is an introduction to the platform for many people on the call and it, you know, gr creating greater awareness. I think unity asset store is probably the most common asset store that we used, uh, you know. For yeah. And so the advantage here versus like say a turbo squid, a CG hero or a unity asset store is just that, that all the content is curated QA'd, right? So you get that you know that at least you're going to get what you think and it's that interoperability like that mix and match that so if you think like let's say you're an animator and you're going to make your student film i mean modeling rigging and all that stuff is a pain and it takes a whole bunch of different skill sets you could grab daz quickly make a cast of five characters export those and away you go mm -hmm. then you can bring those back into maya and animate them or you know, if you're more forward thinking, bring them into Unreal. And now you don't even have to worry about rendering, animate, use your mocap, away you go. Right. So you can focus on what you're great at. Or, or you know, we we did a partnership with Flip Normals and they really liked the idea that if you wanted to be like a creature creator or, you know, sculpt zombies. Well, I can take a character, run a bunch of sliders, get kind of the base I want, bring that into ZBrush. And now I've saved myself, you know, a couple hours because now I've got that mock-up. And so it's, it's really those kind of things like that you can be creative and get, get for, and then you can bring it all back into the ecosystem and have the interoperability. And now you can do all the things that Kirsten was talking about. Cool. Well, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna throw a question from our chat um, to you because this is from Ugo who's, who's calling in from uh, Africa right now, which I think is like 2 a.m. for him. So I wanna get, make sure his question gets out here. He's asking, can the assets be bought by multiple people? And well, can the rights be bought, I guess? so. Yeah. So if, he, if um, Ugo bought a character with one asset, he would have a single license with his account for that. If you wanted to share that content across a team, you know, that's where the enterprise license comes into play or like any kind of custom license. I mean, the easiest way is let's say Kirsten and I wanted to work on something. I could buy a license. She could buy a license and away we go. But because the license isn't on the software, it's just on the content itself. Um, but it, that, like if your teams get, the larger the team, the easier it is with this enterprise license because you have a parent that can share the content. So, and, and Dave, to your question, we talked about mixing aspects of various models. Yes, you can do that. Can then you create as long as the other person gets revenue? It gets sticky there. If you're using a merchant resource that the EULA allows for that, yes, you can. You cannot take aspects of, say, our textures on a DAZ original and then use those to create your own. Does that, am I answering that correct? Your question, Dave? I don't, I don't see you, but. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, it's definitely <laughs> more like you wanted to create a, a zombie Victoria. Yes. So you want to find that asset, you know. Can you resell it after? But if you do, you're selling something that's been done before too. So I just want to know how that would work. And, and Victoria is an interesting example because she's a Daz original. So we own her rights. So we could grant you those rights and like, you're fine. Uh, it's when it's somebody else's character, like Kirsten said, there's, it depends on the. I smiled because we've had in the last two weeks <laughs> about seven copyright infringements. Mm. And normally they're caught by our other users and they, they know our product so well they'll be like this is using so-and-so's textures or this is using and you're just like okay and we we don't have the we get 40 products a day um but we have lots of people like this one pa basically all they do is create alternative shapes for yeah all of our characters like add-on packs really yeah and it's basically taking say we release one carlo and this one person changes their face shape changes the nose, changes the the thickness of their body and sells it as eight different characters. And yeah. they are allowed to do that, yes. Hmm. Yeah, derivatives. Yeah. So you could make, like, you can take my face, make me have a big nose, small nose, change the face shape of my face and yeah. It's, it. I, I mean, for me, it was like trial by fire because all of a sudden I'm like, whoa what can you do with this character Everything. what is this i'm sitting in review going what what is this what am i even looking at that i'm like oh okay now it makes sense very cool well i'm gonna be respectful i mean i know you had a, a time crunch tonight too so i'm um we already hit past the 6 30 so if there's does anyone have a question um 
Dave, Larry, any any student that has a burning question? Because of maybe yes, maybe no, going once, going twice. So I think what I, we're going to do here is say, um, you know, thanks for your time tonight. This is just the beginning because obviously we're entering into this uh, longer term relationship here as far as future talent connections projects. We've been talking about that too uh, and other connections. So um, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thanks to everyone who joined the call. This is a fantastic story of some industry vets who you know, doing something cool uh, that's uh, you know, going to touch our daily lives here. And it's a, a platform you can play around with, potentially get involved in and, and a future employer. So uh, keep, uh, keep Taffy on your radar. Every time I say taffy, I get kind of hungry, like a candy thing. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah well, not to derail. It's a Salt Lake thing. Uh, the building we are in was this old sugar house, and they made saltwater taffy, and they created jobs through the Depression. And so that's where the name comes from. That's awesome. That's, well, there you go. There's the backstory. Um, now, the other, are you LinkedIn friendly people? If a grad student reaches out to add, is that uh, yeah, okay? We got to. We got a thumb and a thumb. So because there was a question on how to connect. LinkedIn is your friends, folks. Uh, again, everyone, thank you. Enjoy your evening. For those of you who have Jason's class next, enjoy. Give Jason a hard time for me. Uh, and Ty, Kirsten, uh, thank you so much. Thanks, okay. Ty, Thanks. Kirsten. Thanks. Really Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thanks, guys.